Hi guys, Kim Stricker here and welcome to our Hook and Look YouTube channel. When you're fishing vertically for bass, the best tip I can give you is to keep one eye on your fish finder at all times. And if you mark a fish directly below, drop it like it's hot. Drop on that one. Drop, 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 drop. That's a big one right there. Drop on him. Look at that fish. Look at that. Ooh, I got him. I got him. I got him. It's a Ooh. big one there too. That is a good one. <laughs> But just seeing them out, ooh, that is a nice fish. Look at the size Holy of this one. Holy cow. That's a good one. Look at that one there. <laughs> oh my look at the, God. Look at the belly on it. Look at the, wow. it's, like, it's like a carp. <laughs> Holy cow. Oh look, at, look at the belly. Of, look at the way it's shaped. It's shaped like a bluegill. Are you kidding me right now? Look at the size of that thing. <laughs> look at, that look at thing. the belly on that fish. <laughs> is it real? <laughs> wow. Look at that thing. It looks like me. <laughs> <laughs> I can't say that I've seen one like that, to be honest with you. Not that fat. Look how fat it is. It looks like size. it literally swallowed like a foot, you know, a football. <laughs> oh. Softball. Look at that little old dream shot worm. That's KVD magic, huh? Wow. <laughs> that's, a, that's an incredible belly. <laughs> huh. Look at that. He's been stocking up on something good. No kidding. Big belly full of gobies. Look at the girth on that thing. Whew. Great lake smallmouth boy. <laughs> it's, look. It, looks like, it looks like a goldfish almost, man. It's I know it's not does. even normal. <laughs> that is awesome. Well, good. I'm glad you pointed that out on the hummingbird. Oh, is that a beautiful fish? I don't even know how big that thing would be. <laughs> Usually, you know, you catch one, it's be the river that are long, it's like, you know, that's like a five pounder. Unfortunately, I didn't have a scale on the boat, but you've got to agree, that was a big fat fatty. Well, as you've come to expect, it wouldn't be a hook and look video without Danny and I getting in the water for a bass eye view of the pattern. Johnny Van Dam will assist topside, so come along. Seeing is believing. <laughs> it's truly on my winky. <laughs> Are you guys seeing them down there? Oh man, this is awesome. We come to this spot, they're good size bass. Awesome, good deal. Yeah, this guy's like a fat five to six pounder. <laughs> and I tell you what, they're never alone. As soon as you see one, they got a buddy with them. Damn, my dad's been following these fish pretty good. They're standing like two foot in front of them. And they just swim right along with them. You've got clumps of rock, big chunk rock. And all of a sudden you have a giant boulder. The smallmouth, you know, kind of gather around those areas. Yeah, I mean, it sounds like right where they should be, you know, those, those little oddities, those, uh, you know, isolated boulders sound perfect. And not only is that easy to pick up on the grass and drop a drop shot down, but just like you say, you know, you come back to those areas, and as soon as you see that arc when you got a bass, it's like playing a video game, drop down on them. And you guys have been pretty successful just picking up those stragglers. While Jonathan and I were fishing, we kept our eyes glued on the fish finder. Whenever our boat happened to be positioned directly above some smallmouth, this is how they appeared on the Humminbird 2D sonar screen. One of the benefits of 2D sonar is that the color and thickness of the arcs displayed reflect the strength of the sonar return and in turn portray the size and density of the fish. The amount of yellow and red in this reading told us that this was no little fish and we need to catch this one. You'll also notice the digital display in the upper left corner telling us our boat is positioned with a bottom depth of 19 feet. More importantly, the depth scale on the right shows us the fish are holding directly below us and just a couple feet off the bottom, an ideal scenario for a drop shot rig. I think you are right about that hook. It does keep it more level. 
that bait itself is so natural. You know, it's so nimble in the water and it keeps horizontal when it's moving and it's such a great bait. Yeah, I mean, for me, the, the best part about that bait is it just doesn't take hardly any movement to give it just a, a lot of action, you know, so you don't have to sit there and shake your rod tip. Take a close look. You'll notice my line is practically indiscernible in this clear water. The fact is, no fluorocarbon line is 100% invisible, but Seaguar Tatsu fluorocarbon is as close as any line can get to the refractive index of water thus making it virtually invisible. What's crazy is a lot of times that weight isn't even noticeable. The moss on the bottom is just thick enough that it hides that drop shot weight. When the bait's moving, that drop shot's kind of causing a little smoke trail behind it. It just moves through that soft moss, kind of picks it up. And I think a lot of times that'll kind of make the bass interested see what's crawling around the bottom. And then when they look up, right in their face is a drop. That's all you need, that little action right there, and uh, you'll get that strike. What's really surprising, John, is all the gobies that I'm seeing on the bottom. They're not that big. Right here, they're like an inch and a half, maybe two inches more gobies. They're actually small. But there are a lot of them. Let one right below the boat. Market one. Ooh, it looks good. It looks good. Get down. Hey, get out of my <laughs> hole. First one down wins. <laughs> There's a couple of fish. There's more than one fish. Got them. This is a better one. Ooh, that is a better fish. <laughs> now that, that was right. First one wins. <laughs> that was. Well, how about that? I told you there was oh, more all right, than one. All right, all right, that's yeah, fine. <laughs> Let's see who's is bigger. How are we gonna do Ooh, this whole net? Man, that is a good fish. I'm gonna net them both. I Here, think. I got it, I got it. I'm gonna pull her. <laughs> One-hander. <laughs> this is more like it. That shows you uh -oh. when you get at them. We're right on both net. sides. That finds a good one here. <laughs> oh, you got one. Big. I'll get yours. <laughs> oh, there you go. Oh, that's more like it. <laughs> that's a little better. Uh, that was kind of crazy, wasn't it? But you go, you got right in there and you snuck up on. Dude, this first one. I should have kept my mouth shut. First one down, yeah. Don't you know, when you're fishing with someone, if you see them down there, you just keep your mouth shut and then you drop down there. <laughs> oh, I got them. <laughs> I was just probably providing commentary. I didn't think oh, you, you got mine though. Yours is bigger. There you go. But that shows you when you do get on them. Oh yeah, they in the summertime they do that. You know, they school up in little wolf packs. You know, they feed and you know work together to you know trap bait fish and stuff. And that's yep. really when you get one. Usually you'll get a couple. You know, mine wasn't coming undone for nothing. There we go. That's nice. Not bad, huh? Nice big old bronze fish. When you're fishing areas like we were fishing out here, there's, you know, with no defined piece of structure, uh, the sonar, you really have to rely on it pretty heavily. And that's what we were doing. A lot of these fish we caught were actually vertically right under the boat. We saw them on the Hummingbird 2D sonar. And that really was the easiest way to be able to locate these fish and that weren't relating to anything. Most cases, when you're fishing vertically like that, all you have to do is you just drop it right next to the troll motor. And as soon as that bait hits the bottom, you know, pick it up and nine times out of 10, they'll be there. You might have to, you know, give the bait a little bit of action from time to time, but you know, most cases those fish are pretty aggressive. You know, you can even tell by the way they act on the sonar, you know, that they're gonna, you know, bite fairly easily. He ain't a bad one, that's for sure. Net boy, come on up here. He doesn't want to. I mean, you can't really make them do what they don't want to do. That's exactly I'm right. just gonna tell you that now. <laughs> you know that. <laughs> All right, I think we're getting close. Here he comes. Very nice. Oh, there's yeah. nothing wrong with that one. You the man. He ain't bad at all. You the man. <laughs> <laughs>